Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're diving into everything you need to know about the JLPT, which stands for the Japanese Language Proficiency Test. Whether you're a beginner or looking to take your Japanese skills to the next level, this video is for you. So, let's get started. First things first, what exactly is the JLPT? Well, the JLPT is an internationally recognized proficiency test for non-native speakers of Japanese. It's designed to assess and certify your Japanese language skills, covering everything from vocabulary and grammar to reading and listening comprehension. Now, let's break down the different levels of the exam. So the JLPT consists of five levels ranging from N5, which is the easiest, to N1, which is the hardest. So the official JLPT website has a summary of the different linguistic competence required for each level and I'll be putting a link in the description box below. Now let's talk about the test sections. So the JLPT places emphasis not just on your understanding of the Japanese vocabulary and grammar but also on applying this knowledge on different real-life communication situations. So the exam is divided into three sections. First is language knowledge, second is reading, and third is listening comprehension. In the language knowledge section, you'll be tested on your vocabulary and grammar. The reading section assesses your ability to understand written Japanese, while the listening section evaluates your listening comprehension skills. So, test sections and test times differ depending on which level you are taking, and then the questions in each section of the test are classified depending on the skills that is being evaluated. So for each type of question, it includes several individual questions, and the purpose of each question is defined for every proficiency level. Again, all of this information is in the official website of JLPT, which I will be linking in the description box below. So let's look at an official practice workbook from the website so you can better understand the test sections. There are different PDF files for each test section. So, for example, you're taking N4 and you want to practice your vocabulary. So, this is the Mondayoshi, the questionnaire booklet for Moji and Koi. So, for this test section, there are different test items. So, you can cross-reference here what is the type of test item. So, for Monday 1, for N4, it's kanji reading. So, you would know that the purpose for this part is how to read the kanji. And then you can cross-check Mondaini orthography. Mondaini is for orthography. And then you can cross-check for other items. So for N4, there's no word formation. So Mondaisan is for contextually defined expressions. Okay, now let's dive deeper more into the JLPT and talk about test scoring and results. So when it comes to the JLPT, understanding how the exam is scored and interpreting your results is crucial. So let's break it down. So each section of the exam is scored separately and your overall score is determined by your performance across all those sections. So for levels N1, N2, and N3, there are three sections for scoring which is language knowledge, reading, and listening. While for N4 and N5, there are only two. So the language knowledge and reading is combined and the other section for scoring is listening. So in order for you to pass the JLPT, you need to do two things. So first, you have to achieve a minimum score for each test section. And second, you also have to get an overall passing score. So for example, if you score below the sectional pass mark in even one section, you will fail regardless of your overall passing score. So for example, if you scored high in reading and then low in your language knowledge and your overall score is passing, you will still fail. So just keep in mind that the passing criteria may differ depending on the proficiency level that you are taking. So now that you know what to expect from the JLPT and how it is scored, let's talk about how you can apply for the exam. So the application process may vary depending on your location, but generally, you just have to visit the JLPT website and then follow the instructions there. You can register anytime for My JLPT in the JEES website. Log in and apply for the JLPT test you plan to take and then pay the test fee. So payments can be made via credit card, bank wire transfer, or at a convenience store. If you are taking the test overseas, first check where the test is available 
as well as the local host institution and where the test site is located. So I'll be putting a link in the description box below, a list of local host institutions and test site cities. From there, you can verify the registration process with the local host institution and just follow it. So for this year, 2024, the exam will be held on July 7 and December 1. And there you have it, your ultimate guide to JLPT. So whether you're studying Japanese for work, school, or just for fun, taking the JLPT can be a great way to measure your progress and set language learning goals. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Japan content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.